Hi, once again, welcome to my daily chat, my daily talk. Um, <laughs> this is episode number 806, 806 for those keeping track. And the topic today is the three words that can destroy your relationship. Actually, three words that will destroy your relationship, I think that's what I said. Anyway, before I jump into that tantalizing title, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker. I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, for men and women, to help you get what you want in life and love. Hi, Elle. I see you in my broadcast. Um, I'm also a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm actually a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which informs my work and also is what started these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. A lot of feminine stuff in there, because I'm passionate about that, as you may have guessed. <laughs> And today we're episode number 806, so it's been over two years now, as I said. And the topic today is the three words that will destroy your relationship. And I thought I'd frame it that mysteriously because I wanted to play with it a little bit, but also give you some answers because as much as this is going to be maybe not surprising for some people, but for other people like, oh my God, we'll see. There's also some solutions and some opportunities to change your wording and change your responses so you don't have the same experience. So you may be thinking about what three words are you talking about? Um, and one that came up for me that I thought was a backup one was like, sorry I cheated, that's not the one I'm going to use. Although that's three words that could definitely ruin your relationship, for sure. Um, there's also, <laughs> it's funny, they're all showing up now, alternatives showing up. Another one that shows up for some people is a scary thing for a relationship is, honey, I'm pregnant. That's another one that could be also be a very disruptive relationship, but I'm not talking about those. I'm actually talking about a much simpler thing than that. And they're much more powerful because it's one of these things that changes your status in relationship. And rather than create some sort of fan for I'm just going to get to the chase. The three words, kind of two and a half, but three words that will destroy your relationship is I am right. Yeah, that's simple. Okay, we're done. So good night. See you later. No, I'm not going to. Let me explain a bit more and then give you some solutions. Um, I was going to say it's going to be the two words because people usually say is I'm right, but it's really three words, which is I am right. Those are the three words that will basically render your relationship un dysfunctional and un and non-functioning. Say unfunctional, no, non-functioning. The reason there's reason for this, and I'll explain what that means. Because the thing is, in relationship, when you say I'm right, for most people, that automatically makes them feel like they're wrong by by omission or by opposition. But the thing about being attached to a position of being right, it forces you into a place of ego control. And in relationship, ego is one of those interesting things that can help, but can largely hurt. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody else, ideally, ideally, there's a sense of expansion and a place of inclusion with the other person. And when you say I'm right, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a couple of caveats on this. When you say I'm right, you're actually creating a place where the other person has no room to move. There's no inclusion there. It's only exclusivity because it's like, I'm right, which means you're wrong. That doesn't work. Now, in a couple of instances, when you're playing with something, for example, if you're choosing where to go to eat, you're going to say, you know, about something you're going to go eat somewhere nice, you may say, well, I'm right about this. You might be just like nudging your partner and playing. But when it comes to big decisions and big communications and arguments, especially, when one position take one position, sorry, when well, one person, got my word switched, takes the position of being the one that says, I am right, then it doesn't work. It creates a wedge between you and your relationship, and it's not what you want to have when you have a healthy communication. There are some options, so I'll give you those in a second. When you, so stay tuned. So when you do get to the position of where the other, say for example, the other person says, I am right, I am right, the three words, and you wonder what to do with that, you can challenge it on one level without being against them and being like defending yourself by saying, are you sure? For example, you can use that in response. Or so you can also say is, I hear you. Because the thing is that person may be seeking validity. So um, as much as I'm saying, you know, I'm right to destroying a relationship, it can also be a claim by that person in a relationship to stand up for themselves, perhaps for the first time ever. And to be heard and honored as holding that position of being right can actually be their claim of ownership, in which case in a relationship it could be a healthy thing. But as a general rule, as I mentioned at the beginning, saying I am right in an argument or an upset or discord or as a way to leverage things is not a healthy thing to add to a relationship. So what can you do instead? 
there are certain things you can say which are pretty obvious ones. The thing is saying saying that I'm I believe this is true, or last time I checked, this is what I believe what I heard as being the right answer. Because the thing when you say the word right, and the thing is, and let me let me take a make meta position for a second. To take a meta position, spiritually speaking, when we know the term, when we say I am in front of something else, we're declaring a truth. So I am worthy, I am healthy are truths you're declaring because you're creating, because the I am presence is spirit, if you want to get spiritual for a second. So that was meta. So let me bring it back down again for a second. Well, me, sorry, finish the last point. So when you say I am right, that is true in spiritual terms, but in relationship, that's where you play differently, usually. So bring it back down to, bring it out of the meta back into the physical. saying that I believe this to be so or I've heard that this is right it disconnects you from the I am so you're not attached to it because the other part is when you say I am right in an argument and conversation if you, found, if you find out later on from your partner that the fact they had more accurate information than you did and you were wrong it can be very disruptive to your own ability to function hi Sue nice to see you in my broadcast I'm just thought, hi Jen nice to see you in here too I'm seeing lots of new people in my broadcast wonderful thank you for joining me so Shifting the onus of the language from away from your own self to say that my belief is, or I've heard this, or I think this is so, creates a little buffer between the word right and you, which gives you freedom. And having the ability to be, um, what's we're looking for, um, nimble <laughs> in conversation is a healthy place to be. And again, that term, I am right, is a very challenging place because it becomes something you have to defend against the other person. And that creates, again, a separation, a wedge that makes relationship harder. Equal, um, so equally as opposite? No, it's not gonna, I was gonna say, if you say I am wrong, is that true too? That can work out, that's less effective. That, that's less, excuse me, less challenging in relationship. It's a disempowering thing to say, but it's not as bad. When you say I am right in a partnership, it can create this wedge, again, as you can, which is not what you want. You wanna create connection and, to, well, my suggestion is if you want a healthy relationship, you want to create connection, intimacy, and, and mutual support. So if to the outside world, one of you wants to say to the world, I am right, you can defend and protect your partner with that, and that's okay. That's what I'm saying. When you say I am right in the relationship, that's where it becomes dysfunctional and disruptive. So my invitation to you is to look at where you've said that in your life, particularly, in, and, and I would say this in any area of relationships, not just the romantic ones. But even in friendships, we may have said that because when you say that, you're creating a little separation, increasing, increasing, increasing between you and somebody else. And my um, invitation, as my encouragement is in all my work and my coaching with my, my clients, I'm oh, sorry, I think there's some crows on the roof and they keep seeing them fly by the window outside to get my attention. Like, excuse me for a second. So in, <laughs> in, I'm always encouraging and, and teaching about greater intimacy, greater connection, greater author, autonomy, um, authority, authenticity, that was the word, authenticity in relationship. So this claim of I am right can create a wedge which goes against that. So first of all, change your languaging. That's a big part of how you can shift out of that limited perspective and, and become much more fluid and be negotiable. So you can actually have a conversation and actually maybe hear from somebody else like your partner to understand where they're coming from. These are things that contribute to closeness. If you're the person, again, who's being told the other, by the other person that they are right, and if you can hear the crows over the microphone, but you can hear them out the window, um, claim, if, you claim, if they claim they are right, it can be challenging to respond to that because if they're your partner, you don't want to really undermine them or trip them up because they're holding onto a position. There was a actually just a flashback. Something, somebody, something that a, a facilitator of a workshop I was in told me years ago. It's going back thirty years now. Wow, just came back in. When they were with their their wife and they would have arguments because they apparently had conflicts at home occasionally. Don't know how frequently it was. They were basically in this position of like, I'm right, you're wrong. No, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, I'm wrong. And they would go back and forward in this level. It would actually be a more complicated conversation. But the underlying thing was one was right, one was wrong, and they keep fighting over who was right. The um, the person that ended the the person that ended the argument most effectively was the first one that could get to say, "I love you." And this is the thing that happened. And told the story is very humorous when I told it. Was basically was this person had a position was getting all upset and furiating, all pumped up, pumped up, 
and their partner said to them I love you and it was one like I can't argue with that <laughs> stop the argument dead in its tracks I'm not saying it's the answer to every argument but it works really well and the other part is um, hi Dan that's what you're saying here you really like, you really, really like re I'm going to say the word really like my outlook on the subject going to dinner but we'll listen to it later in, in its entirety the key is to be humble and don't stumble and don't let pride allow your relationship to crumble nicely done I like the alliteration thank you for that and yeah, please do when you come back. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to go. It's a fairly, I think I've gotten to my point here, but we'll see how much longer it goes. But thank you for commenting on that. So I appreciate that input. Thank you. Um, so, so yeah, so basically that was the thing. It's, oh, so in the context of that argument they would have, when one person says to the other person, I love you, it stopped the conversation, the, the argument um, in its tracks. And it's kind of one of these things that's a teaching point. And I want to, ask you this question because it's one of these questions that's so fundamental in life and growth in spiritual development is do you want to be right or do you want to be loving or do you want to be right or you want to be happy do you want to be right or you want to be whole it's all these things either or because being right is a position that is away from all the other parts it's nice to be right I'm not going to argue with that but having to be right in your life can make you very isolated learning how to be as, as Dan put it to be humble, not to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, downtrodden, but to be humble in terms of, it's almost something, <laughs> okay, I'll say it that way, to be humble in your magnificence, play that, play that I want to emphasize, as in, know who you are, know how magnificent, how amazing you are, but, but don't make it something you have to broadcast or um, advertise. If you already know you're magnificent, because you are, just so you're a little female for you, you are magnificent, hint, hint. There's no need to advertise it. So being humble is okay, because it doesn't take away from who you are. It just takes away from your ability, it takes away from your need to um, elevate yourself onto a pillar, which is unnecessary. Because that's the other thing about being right. When you say that I am right, you're actually trying to put yourself on a pillar above the other person, which is a positioning thing. And in a healthy relationship, there ain't no positioning outside the bedroom. Okay, that was a, that was a sly, to, sly response. So my, my invitation to you, my encouragement to you, my recommendation is to look at in your life, in relationships, plural, not just your romantic ones, but other relationships, where you feel coming up, and this is the thing, it's a warning sign or an indicator, where you feel this coming up inside of you, a sense of attachment to being right, a sense of needing to be... Um, proven so when you can feel when you when that feeling come up inside you can stop it because that's the thing it's taking awareness to another level not just being aware of what you've said but of being aware of what you might say so when you can bring your awareness internal and bring it forward back into yourself and notice when you're um when that energy is stirring when that feeling is coming up or you feel like you need to say something to protect yourself or defend yourself be clear where you're coming from and be aware of what you're saying because sometimes you may say things and really afterwards like I didn't mean to say that or you didn't mean for the other person to hear it that way you can try to say it another way this little piece can change every relationship so not only the three words I mentioned at the beginning but in any communication you have with any person can you be present enough to yourself to listen to what's brewing to think what you're going to say first and then not say it ultimately in the first place when you can listen inside and catch yourself with what you're about to broadcast the other person and go maybe I should edit it before I say it it's like with these Facebook lives I'm not scripted and they're not planned so what comes out comes out and it's not edited I could shoot a video on my phone and put it onto YouTube later on by editing and tweaking all the words the right way it's kind of like having that power in your own head it's the ability Thank you, exactly, Sue. Yeah, don't argue to win, but to discuss and understand. And the thing is, most people do argue to win because arguments usually, usually come out of bruised egos and wanting to be proven right. So it's almost like having to, dis to um, diffuse, that's the word, diffuse the argument so you can actually have a discussion and we can understand and come to an, come to an agreement with each other. But when you say, I am right, you're putting a wedge in between it and it makes it impossible. I'm sure that there are many broken relationships there are many divorces that happened 
because of a position of I am right that separated the two parties. I don't have data on that. I'm just, it's, it's, that's an assumption on my part, just to be clear. I don't know if I'm right on that. <laughs> but I'm making that point to think that may be possible. So coming back to choosing love over right, choosing happiness over right, as in righteousness or being right, is a healthier choice and a more contributory choice to a healthy long-term relationship. There was another piece in there. What was it? Give me a second to think. Just rewind for a second. So, being right, being acceptable, appreciating. So let me finish that. Yeah, the piece on the internal piece. Let me finish that piece. One of the skills that I'm still working on, but I challenge you to work on yourself as well, is to really start to tap into what it is that's brewing before you say something. It sounds weird, but it works. Trust me is you can feel a response coming up and it's sometimes that sense where you say, you know, you should bite your tongue or count to 10. It's kind of like that, but it's a bit more nuanced. It's basically about just watching what you're about to say, because if you're like most people, and if you're like me, <laughs> we have a tendency sometimes to say things before we know what we're saying. So having, and it's interesting to have two levels of that. One of those is saying things that I shouldn't say, that I may get in trouble for after I say it. Then I'm talking about the other part in my work when I'm doing this work with coaching and also when I do my videos is where stuff comes through that I say that I have no awareness of because it's beyond my understanding. That's different. So I'm talking about the, this first one, the, the base one that is more of a, um, I shouldn't have said that type stuff. So having the understanding of your languaging and what you say and, and to, it's almost having a gatekeeper on your own thoughts so when it comes out, it comes out clearer. It's absolutely more, um, it's a more aware and more conscious and more effective way to be. So, as I said at the beginning, you have a choice. It's a choice about being um, ego-driven, wanting to be, a, be the one who wins and the other person loses, or it's an opportunity to be more willing and more receptive to have a dialogue and conversation. So, play with that. See what comes up, and maybe, maybe you'll find your relationship to transform because of it. Maybe you're already doing it, which case, great. And if you are, great. If you're not, and you're trying this out and it works, let me know how it goes. Can you disengage that deflect excuse me, that reflexive response that puts you in a position of leverage of power. Because it's not true power, it's actually egotistical power, which I've talked about before. This is one of those talks that could go in different directions, but I think I'm going to leave it here because it seems like I've given you the the the, um, the key piece of the... <laughs> what is this trying to be? Um, <laughs> the context I was trying to give you is understanding how this works. So I appreciate you watching my broadcast, by the way. Uh, let me give you a couple of things. Um, in the link, I'm going to put a couple of links in the comments. I usually do. But I'll put a link in the comments to reach out to me. Because if you want to have a talk about this and go deeper, I'll put a link for a discovery session. If you're a woman especially, you can do that. And also, if you want to reach out to me on social media, media, you can do that as well. In case you haven't figured out this out, this is a Facebook Live. I do every day on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my page. It goes into replay form on my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like my page. And also onto my YouTube channel, because you always got to, have, got to have backups. On my YouTube channel, there's a channel on there called Barry Selby. That's me. Please like, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And it's on playlists on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch my broadcasts. So there'll be a couple of links in the comments. Oh, my book will be in there too, because I mentioned that at the beginning. And um, an invitations to reach out for a, short, a talk as well. And now you know where to find me in replay form. And if you want to join me live, which I do appreciate and invite you to do, thanks for those of you with me today and for the comments. If you want to join me live, just make sure you're here at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, because that's where I go seven days a week. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, as always, I remind you to take care of yourself. I will be back here again tomorrow, same time, same channel. That'll be another episode, another talk, another topic. And I invite you to uh, tune in then. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.